You're tuning in to Feli's Fishbowl, a marketing podcast for the entrepreneur that wants to create a feel-good business model. On this show, you'll be given the permission slip you've been missing to make that change and start building the business you originally dreamed about. Stick around for solo and interview episodes talking all things content creation and marketing. Sound good to you? Let's dive in. Hello, hello, and welcome to the first ever official podcast episode of Feli's Fishbowl. Today we are getting into the nitty gritty of what is Feli's Fishbowl, what makes up my online ecosystem that is the fishbowl, how I came across the term Feli's Fishbowl, and just all that good stuff. Um, today's episode, we're going to dive into how I got into this online world, how I became an entrepreneur, what my growth looked like from a general VA all the way to the agency I now run and the rebrand and the rebrand that led to the launch of VIP fish, which is where we are now. The other episodes that are coming out today is one explaining what a content repurposing agency does, so what we do at Belly Day VA, and then the second one is all about the power of omnipresence for your brand, because we are on a big omnipresence kick in November as I am focusing on selling spots for retainer repurposing packages at the agency. But... I know you're all here for the story of the fishbowl. I get asked this all the time. Why do I call my one-on-one clients my fish? Where did the term Feli's fishbowl come from? So let's get to it. Basically, I have always been a traveler. I'm recording this from Oaxaca, Mexico, and I have been traveling off and on since 2014, but I did take my first solo trip in 2011 when I was only 17. (laughs) Basically told my family, like, don't want to spend Christmas with you. See, I'm going to Germany to see my friends. And then I went to Germany for three weeks because what is life? But basically, in 2017, I was in my second year of living in Alberta, Banff, Canada, super beautiful place. Absolutely amazing place if you ever get the chance to visit it. But I hate the cold. I hate the snow. It was negative 30 degrees for about a week straight. That's Celsius to all my American friends. Sorry, it's like I think negative two Fahrenheit, something like that. It's in the negatives of Fahrenheit, which has to tell you how cold it is. But um, I was like scrolling and scrolling, trying to figure out how to work online because I needed to move out of Canada and to a place that was warm which basically meant I needed to work for myself because Canada does not have warm parts to it. I am originally from Vancouver, Canada. It still rains. It still gets cold. It still hits zero and below. You still see snow. Not for me. Too cold. So basically, I came across an article by a travel blogger who is known as World Nate. And he had done one of those like 20 ways to work online, 20 ways to make money while traveling or something like that. And he mentioned becoming a virtual assistant. I had no idea what that was, but I was working front desk at a hotel and figured, you want me to be an assistant, but virtually? Sick, I can do that. And his recommendation for getting started as a virtual assistant was to join Upwork. So what did I do? I made a profile on Upwork and I actually got my first job like within a week for $5 an hour. We will not talk about that. That's fine. (laughs) But I ended up working for that lady for over a year and I even met her when I moved to Australia Um, Later in 2017, I moved to Australia and she lived in Sydney. She was a lovely person. And that was like me dipping my toes in the online space. But from discovering that blog post and what a virtual assistant was until late 2018, even realistically like mid 2019, I did nothing with that information. (laughs) So in 2018, I came back to Canada after being gone for a year and a half, living in Australia, living in Asia, living my best life in the sun to Vancouver wildfire season air warnings absolute smog like you can imagine the reverse culture shock after three months in Asia and just the misery that is 
me in Canada. <laughs> and so at that point, I made the promise to myself, like, this is it. I'm going to look into this virtual assistant stuff again and figure out how to get out of this country, how to make money for myself so I never have to return unless I choose to. And thus began my journey, <laughs> uh, basically a year of like flip-flopping, doing things that were just busy work and not really making any moves before I discovered personal development and mindset work. And eventually, August 2018, I signed a client, literally, sorry, August 2019, literally a year after promising myself I would like figure this shit out. Um, and from August until March 2020, I was on a fucking roll signing clients every month. I was having like seven to 10 uh, discovery calls every month. And it reached the point where I became an agency because I was hiring subcontractors to support me in all the work that I was getting. By June 2020, I believe I had 16 clients and six team members. Maybe it was five team members. Five team members. At some point, I decided to run a mastermind. Did I know what a mastermind was less than a year into my entrepreneurial journey? No, I had no idea. I just wanted to bring a group of people together because I was constantly being complimented for how I was a networking queen, for how I had signed clients basically through referrals from month two in my business and how all these people ended up finding me through word of mouth and through me just like popping up and saying, what's up? Um, and that is how the fishbowl came to be. My first ever and actually only mastermind I ever ran, I ran it twice, was called Felly's Fishbowl. The name was conceptualized by my sister. I put a sticker on Instagram being like, I want to run a mastermind. I want to run a group thing. This is what it's about. I don't know what to call it. I love alliterations. And so my sister came out with all these like random things. I should go find it just to see like what were the options. And based on what she said, I then created a poll being like what one resonates with you. And the one that won was Felly's Fishbowl. And from there, I started calling everyone who signed up to join Felly's Fishbowl my fish. I referred to all of my one-on-one -on -one mentoring clients as my fish. And I still do to this day. So that was June 2020. I ran it again in November 2020, I want to say. And basically, the fishbowl kind of faded out in my branding from November until late 2021, because I had no idea what I was doing as a mentor. The agency, I got it. Clients were always coming. I was always getting referrals. Even here as I'm recording this, I've had the same client for three years and a second client, she'll be at three years in three months, I think. So I've had some people that have stuck around through all the pivots of general VA to content VA to I have one contractor who might touch your stuff to I have a team of five. You're not speaking to me. You're speaking to my OBM back to me, back to project managers, changing the services, you know, like I have that client loyalty that I love and has made my business so easy but I never found that same groove as a mentor until now. And so from mid 2020 until 2021, late 2021, maybe like October, November, I just kind of like would throw out offers, take them away when no one signed up, would go back to selling the agency because I knew how to sell it and was all over the place. And it must have been Kirsten. Kirsten Roldan is my coach and has been since. February 2021, I joined Million Dollar Email, which used to be known as Finesse Your Funnel. And I'm positive it was Kirsten. She just started the weekly Monday coaching calls in Million Dollar Email. And I said, like, I'm doing this and this and this. But what I want to be doing is this. I wanted to repackage everything that I had. I had a tract and sign. I was trying to launch a content challenge. I had all these trainings that I'd done for different people at different times. I had templates. I had a podcast pitch template. I had an email sequence template. I had so much random things that I had created over the course of a year of trying to figure out my place in the online mentorship space. 
And I just wanted to put them all into one space, a client portal, and have a high touch one-on-one -on -one service where they got access to everything that I did. If I ran a program live, you could come. If, if you wanted to see a training I did, it was in the client portal. If you wanted to talk to me, we had Slack and we had Zoom. And Kirsten just gave me that permission slip of, well, why are you doing all these other things if you know what you want to do? And of course, at the time, it was like, well, nobody's doing what I want to do. So I don't know how to do it because I don't have an example. Which is like a common struggle for me. It's the same thing that happened with me with video repurposing as a service for the agency this year. That I couldn't find anybody offering video repurposing. So I put off launching it because I was like, I don't know what to charge. I don't know how to package this because it doesn't exist. But honestly... That's the whole thing of being an entrepreneur is finding the gap in the market. And so VIP Fish was born. I scrapped everything that I was doing and I started building a content portal. So, or sorry, uh, I scrapped everything that I was doing and I started building my client portal, which is now known as the Fish Tank. And I put everything I had into VIP Fish. It took me three months to sell one spot because the marketing was trash. <laughs> like When I look back through my marketing from 2021, mind you, I was in intense brain fog, intense depression, and just in such denial over it. But it's like I read the content that I put out in 2021, and it's garbage. 2020, fire. 2019, fire. 21, my flop era. <laughs> like 2022 is my comeback. And now I have lovely fish, multiple fish working with me one-on-one -on -one to market their businesses and create feel-good marketing strategies. So that's where we are now that the fishbowl has been reintroduced to my world. And for a while I was thinking like, do I make the fishbowl a free community? Do I make it a paid community? Do I make it a membership? And a podcast has been on my to-do list for two years. 2020 New Year's resolution was start a podcast. Here we are, final minutes of 2021, second to last month, and I am launching the podcast that was always meant to be. And it's my whole business coming full circle, coming back to who I was when I started and was able to sign clients with ease, was able to get 10 people on a sales call in a matter of a week of promoting an offer. We are back in Belly's Fishbowl. We have come back to the ecosystem that makes up my online world, and that is the Fishbowl. So I want to say thank you for being here. I hope you're as excited as I am to get into these episodes that I'm like cranking out. I can't even begin to explain how good some of these topics are going to be. There's going to be a hard focus on content repurposing throughout the months of November and December, but come January, come 2023, we're diving back into feel-good marketing, and I'm bringing on guests, and shit's about to get real. Shit is about to get real. Mark my words, this podcast is going to blow your mind in one way or another, whether it's my insane, unpopular opinions, or it's just something that you never thought of, because my content is a permission slip. I am here to give you the permission slip to run your business unprofessionally. Man, 2020, 2019, when I started my business, my photos, my business photos were all modeling photos. I have to this day never had a professional brand photo shoot. All my photos have been taken by me or professional photographers, but I was doing like boudoir or I was doing like makeup tests for students or just letting someone paint me up weird because we felt like it. Like there's pictures of me fully painted in gold and fully painted in red. <laughs> Those were fun. I went on a Tinder date after the red one and I could not get it off my skin. It was, it was a, it's a good story. That's all I have for you. I'm going to love you and leave you. Stick around for the show notes because there is a giveaway for the first three episodes of this podcast. And I would love to see you enter. Oi. Before you skip to the next episode, I wanted to share with you the details of our very exciting podcast launch giveaway. I have two ways that you can enter. The first is rate, review, send me a screenshot at info at The second way is your stereotypical share to Instagram and tag me at Felly Day and at Felly's Fishbowl. 
The accounts will be linked in the show notes, but you will need to tag at least one of them to be entered into the giveaway or send me the screenshot so that I know and can track your entries. If you do both, two entries. Um, the five winners of this giveaway will be invited to a private group marketing workshop where we're going to discuss a feel-good marketing strategy and how everyone can start the new year with a marketing strategy that they can get their energy behind. That's it. That's all. Let's get to the outro. And that's all I have for you for this episode. If you enjoyed listening, please leave a review, rate, subscribe, whatever it is that your listening platform tells you to do for the shows that you love. If you head down to the show notes, you will find links to follow us on Instagram at Belly Day and at Belly Fishbowl. I've also added the link to sign up for my workbook, 10 Alternative Ways to Market, for all of you who are looking for new ways to market your business in a feel-good way. Trust me, it's a good one. And please, if you've been listening and want to share the show, tag us. I love to see what everyone's listening to and what's resonating with you the most. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Catch soon.